for delivering us here safely. Um, we realize that it is winter time and these extreme temperatures are causing uh, some adjustments. We pray that you uh, watch over us. Those that are cold, we pray that they find warm incentives to, to aid them. Those who have elderly parents or relatives, we pray that they are on, it's on the forefront of their mind to check on them. Father, we pray that this meeting goes smoothly, and we thank you for all you do. These things we ask in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll go on to ordinances adoption. Commissioner Galt, please. Can we do the minutes? Oh, the minutes. Commissioner Abraham, please. I move that the readings of the minutes for January 28, 2014 City Commission meeting be waived and that the minutes of said meetings prepared by the City Clerk be approved as written. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rose. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Cable. Aye. Ordinances adoption. Commissioner Galt, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance accepting a donation of a parcel of real property known as Independence Park located at 1144 Circle, Paducah, McCracken County, Kentucky, and authorizing the mayor to execute a deed of conveyance and all documents relating to same. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The City of Paducah hereby accepts a donation of a parcel of real property known as Independence Park located at 1144 Circle, Paducah, McCracken County, Kentucky, from Independence Bank Shares, Inc. This property is valued at $225,000. Further, the mayor is hereby authorized to execute a deed of conveyance and all documents relating to same to transfer the real property to the city of Paducah. Second. Okay, we've uh, discussed this, but Mark, what do you have to say? Well, uh, evidently last week I mentioned a, the, a wrong bank in, in discussion with this. If I did, then I apologize. It's definitely Independence Bank and providing this piece of property for us, and we're really thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay. City Clerk? Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Gold? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Cable? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes, please. All right. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 70, Parks and Recreation of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, this ordinance summarizes as follows that section 70-32 public parks, playgrounds, and recreational areas available to the public is amended to include Independence Park, located at 114 Forest Circle. This ordinance remains renames Henry Clay Park as Albert Jones Park and renames Greenway Trail to the Clyde F. Boyles Greenway Trail. Second. Any discussion on this? City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Gold? Aye. Commissioner Rhodes? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. Ordinances introduction. Commissioner Wilson, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce entitled An Ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, approving an agreement with Pepsi Mid America Company for exclusive beverage and snack provider service in Paducah Parks facilities and authorizing the mayor to execute said agreement. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The City of Paducah hereby approves an agreement with Pepsi Mid-America Company for exclusive beverage and snack provider service in Paducah Parks facilities and authorizes the mayor to execute said agreement. This agreement is for a period of seven years and contains two four-year renewal options. Second. Thank you. In November, we put out a request for proposal uh, for the beverages uh, to be uh, non-alcoholic beverages to be served in the parks, machine-wise, fountain-wise. Uh, actually, both of our uh, local providers, uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, had requested. They said it'd make their life easier if we just didn't have to battle back and forth for every special event and every activity and this sort of thing. So we went ahead, and I'd done some research uh, previously on uh, with other cities and their uh, soft drink uh, provisions, and this is what we came up with. 
And when we uh, evaluated the uh, both uh, proposals, uh, this was the best. And uh, including uh, cash donations and uh, in-kind donations and signage and everything else, the uh, total actually uh, goes up to over $60,000 so in material. And it is for park facilities uh, only. Spirit of negotiation? Not necessarily. Not really. <laughs> Everybody's compares, pretty matter of fact. This and compares then, to what other communities? Oh, absolutely, have done. absolutely. With what others are doing in the area and, and region and across Kentucky. All right. I think when uh, moving forward, uh, I'd like to see those 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 comparisons. Are they in here? Uh, you didn't. Okay, so they are in the city clerk's office. I'm okay. sorry. We can review them the vote. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, they're in the city clerk's office and available. Okay, please. And it says that they'll do a one-time payment for scoreboard and signage upgrades. Yes. Installation. And then uh, program sponsorship. Three thousand dollars a year for program sponsorship beyond. Mr. Abraham, please. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled an ordinance approving and authorizing the purchase of handheld radios for the Paducah Police Department and authorizing the mayor to execute a contract for same. This ordinance is summarized as follows, that the city of Paducah hereby approves and authorize the finance director to make payments to Motorola, Motorola Solutions in an amount not to exceed $33,373.60 for the purchase of up to 13 Motorola XTS 2500 800 MHz portable radios at $2,567.20 each for the Paducah, Paducah, Paducah Police Department in compliance with the Kentucky State Purchasing Contract. Grant funds in the amount of $32,000 received from the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security will be used for purchase with balance being paid from the police department's budget. Second. Hi, Chief. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, what I have in front of you here is, uh, as uh, Commissioner Abraham has mentioned, $33,000 uh, from a Kentucky Homeland Security grant. Uh, you probably have seen or it's about the third year we've used this. We've spread out those radio purchases over the three years. This will get us to about 52, 54 radios. So we're going to need to purchase the remaining amount. From what we understand, uh, they're going to close that grant on us uh, for this purpose anyway. And we're going to need to find that money over the next year or two to finish out our, our project. But this gets us about 13 radios closer to uh, having a brand new radio or within a couple of years for every patrol officer that's out there. So, How many more do you need? Uh, roughly 10 to 12. Uh, we'll have to see when we get total account uh, what we can squeeze out of this money and go from there. Uh, the other benefit to this, uh, and I'll throw in there, is we, we've been able to pass down some of our older radios to EPW and maybe even parks and uh, get some more radios in some hands of their folks to communicate. And how, how long do they last? Uh, well, normally I think they're rated about 12 years or so. We've had some that are over 20 years. Yeah, it's just an infrastructure piece that we don't want to uh, take the or, or take the uh, the chance on having the officer out there and it not working. So we felt like a couple of years ago this was a project that we wanted to put this grant towards, and we've been very successful at doing that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> sure. Okay, we're going to the city manager's report. I'm going to ask Chief Barnhill to uh, appoint. City Commission with the recent formation of the Police Foundation. Would you mind doing that? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, I, I presented to you, and I, I apologize for not having notes here. I had left those in your office, Mr. City Manager. And uh, what we have recently done, and this is a project, the foundation is a 501c3 uh, that we have established uh, to assist and uh, aid the department in uh, the overall mission. 
Now we know the city's budget, uh, police department budget's $9.1 million. Over the last two or three years specifically, we've had to tighten our belt. And unfortunately, some of those programs get tightened also out of that. The 501c3 is a nationally, uh, well, the program itself, police foundations are nationally recognized. There are a lot of agencies, some even in, uh, in Kentucky that have those established. They support training, education, some of the outlying missions that are just not uh, police res response related uh, that we would like to, to, to do that uh, we know are going to benefit us in education and training and those type things and it benefit our mission to the community. Uh, but sometimes we have to tighten. We're not able to uh, complete or do everything that we would like to. So we've established this foundation. It's set up. We're in the process of identifying or bringing in our board of directors. They will have complete control over it. Uh, I do not have ultimate authority. It's a recommendation made by made through the process, through the department, up to me. I can approve or disapprove to go in front of the board, and the board has the final decision. Uh, so there's oversight there, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So it's uh, it's key in the wording that that this is intended to enhance funding, not to uh, make up for lack of funding. Or supply, again, correct. the amount of resources that are dedicated to the police budget is is the commission's call and it's a, a factor of a lot of things this is a lot to allow some things to happen that otherwise uh, couldn't <clears throat> correct a lot of times uh, you know out in the public and I don't know if you all get this but I certainly do there are a lot of people that want to help us out in several different ways a lot of times that's not money but occasionally it does come up and they want to provide us money to further our mission as a department up until now we have not had the mechanism to, to be able to handle that or take that in um, this is a mechanism that will allow that and have oversight from a separate board, uh, which I don't you know, have any control or very minimal control over. Any questions? <coughs> all right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you all. By the way, Chief Barnhill made a very fine and informative presentation to the Rotary Club last week. Um, we are uh, progressing on the uh, selection of the new staff members in the Department of Main Street. Uh, the events manager process uh, has reached the point of a, uh, a preferred candidate, so uh, that is in the process of being finalized, and it's expected that that will be on the personnel actions at your next meeting in two weeks. Uh, progress is being made in the uh, downtown development specialists as well. I, I, I won't uh, say certain tonight that that'll be ready for two weeks from tonight, but it, it's a possibility. So um, that's all good. The uh, negotiations that were, were being held concurrently with both the FOP and the IAFF uh, between the city and each of those unions respectively have reached the point of tentative agreement. I'm happy to say, and I want to commend the negotiating teams of both the unions and also the city for uh, uh, constructive negotiations. I'm not sure, Commission Rhodes, if they became spirited or not, uh, but uh, they were very um, um, open and uh, frank and uh, I think fairly uh, harmonious. So uh, pending approval by both respective unions of the contracts, it's uh, likely that they will both be before you in two weeks as well. So a lot of progress on the personnel side. Also in two weeks, uh, I'm expecting that uh, Director Thompson will be before you with an assist from the gentleman next to him to give you a, a, a design plan for the restoration or renovation of the bank on the south end of Noble Park Pond. Recall that, that you budgeted money for that this year in the budget to get that project started, the entire project being the whole pond bank, but of course that's more than what we can accomplish in one year. And uh, included in this design uh, plan, if you will, will be a rather innovative proposal to retain the duck house uh, on, on the, the pond as well. So uh, looking forward to that and looking forward to that project proceeding because that is a, a very necessary project in my opinion. And I think the commission agreed with that last year. Um, it's an aesthetic project. It's a safety project. It's, it's a next step in, in kind of the complete uh, overhaul of Noble Park. Uh, that's been underway for a number of years. Is that it? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm trying to read my scratch here to see if I had anything else. Oh, I'd like to, I'd like to ask uh, Rick to come up and uh, acquaint you with uh, 
his uh, plan for dealing with the weather over the next few days, depending on what happens. Mayor Commission, I don't know if you all have been getting your share of phone calls with regards to our streets. Uh, I think our main routes are looking very well. However, the secondary streets, the subdivision streets are not looking so so well. They're still ice packed and snow covered. Uh, we have somewhat of a, a national problem that's taking place, uh, and I'm wanting to make you and the public aware of that, and that's with our salt supplies. Our salt supplies are deplenished across the country, and let me tell you how that comes about. Agencies such as the City of Paducah or the State Highway Department, they put in their orders every year for their salt, their bulk salt orders that they think they'll need, and that's typically based off of prior years because that's all you have to go on. So when we supply that to our vendors, the vendors go and mine that salt and then stockpile it. They do that nationwide, all of them. Well, now with this severe winter that we've had, everybody has more than doubled their salt usage. So uh, right now we were being rationed uh, by the North American Salt Company that they were saying we were not gonna get any more salt. So the salt that we have uh, in our storage is about 250 to 300 tons. It takes about 75 to 100 tons to treat one time our main routes. Notice I said your main routes, Broadway, Jefferson, 21st, 13th Street, and I can go on and on. So that means that we only have about three trips on those main routes. So that means that the neighborhood streets will still remain snow covered and slick because we're trying to ration that for ourselves to keep us moving. If you can get from your neighborhood to a main street, you know, we can go on. Um, now we have this evening's event and then there's another event that's coming on Sunday. We don't know how much that is or is not going to bring. I was able to get about 90 tons of salt today. Typically we order 500 tons of salt for an entire winter. We're well in excess of that right now. And with the winter that keeps coming, that won't stop. And every time we turn around, it's freezing. It'll, it'll rain first. A lot of people say, why aren't you treating the streets before it rains? The brine that we put out, if it rains first, it washes it off. So we, we hold back on that and wait till we know the proper way to treat it. We're having to manage that to the best of our ability, but I wanted to make you all aware of that because this is something that's going on nationwide. When I was on the phone today, bag barring and stealing whatever I could get in salt, I was talking to people that was in their homes because they couldn't get to work and they worked for the salt company because they were snowed in and they were working out of their homes. So this is definitely a national problem and Paducah is no different than anywhere else, but I just want to make you all aware of it because you're going to get phone calls. I'm getting phone calls and we're doing the best we can. And the people that you and I met with today, Rick, mm -hmm work for the state they're having the same trouble right with, with getting enough salt so it is all over the nation Atlanta mm -hmm. Florida Kansas <laughs> so you know you can you can understand the American salt company if they've got you know demand for X they're not gonna mine extra and pay extra and, and then pay to have it stored just on the thought they might sell a bunch of extra salt well there is there, there's also there's also, a, a, there's, there's people that are going as many as four states over to get salt from some other people that may have ample supply because they're not having the winter that, that we're having. Are we speculating in salt? Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure, but I, I did learn something today that, the, that the, the best storage for salt is the ground. They don't mine more salt than what they need. And some of the contracts, the way the contracts were written two years ago, they were having, okay, Paducah, you say you're going to need 500 tons, but let's say you only use 350 tons. North American Salt Company wanted you to pay them for the 150 tons you didn't order because they mined it. They put it aside for you. And I'm like, that's kind of unfair. I mean, because if I had a crystal ball or anybody had a crystal ball, they could say, I need, ex I need exactly this amount of tons because I know exactly what the weather's going to do for the next three months. I'm in the wrong job. I need to be in Vegas counting cards. Okay. So it's, it's kind of unfair on both ends. I mean, I, I see it from the business end as far as they mining too much and not selling it. 
I can see that. And I can also see where, you know, we ask for too much and don't buy it. So it's, it's a tough situation. Okay. Well, I'd just like to say a few things. Thank you, Rick. Okay. It was good to see the Paducah Tillman speech team uh, as the Murray Region speech champions this week. And of course, those are the young people that come and help us with our commission meetings. So that was good news. And good news for community colleges across Kentucky with the funding that the governor uh, has set forth for community colleges, and especially good for the Paducah School of Art and Design because it pushes them closer to being able able to fulfill their goal for their school of art and of course that's our number one priority for the change. We need to make sure our local representatives right. still know that we we want that to pass. Right. So everybody call. Mm -hmm. uh, this Friday uh, at 4 30 we'll have a reception for the Mayor's Art Club for 2014 and our first two artists uh, for this quarter are Bill Ford and Mary Ruth Maggard. Um, so I encourage everybody to come out if the weather's good for that. On February the 22nd, um, the Bass Pro Shop is having the Big Cat Quest if the river cooperates with the fishing tournament. So they'll have approximately 100 anglers using our new facility off of Burnett. So that's also good. Any commissioners, do you have anything? It's on February 22nd. So it'll be our first fishing tournament at our new facility that into existence. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's really good. You got to have it, though. Rick, do you have anything to say for that? On that? Okay. Commissioners? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to comment on the uh, the chamber dinner on uh, on Friday. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Um, great, Sandra. And great job, great job. And uh, the history of uh, former leaders, uh, you, you saw names that you still hear and, and recognize. That that's always, that's always a nice feeling. Alan and Rhodes. Then, huh? <laughs> no. Alan Rhodes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Alan Rhodes yeah, yeah. It's it's it was a bunch of them, and um, uh, it was a special moment also with uh, with Deborah mm -hmm. being named the uh, chair. Chair. Okay. Chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but the the videos, the videos, and I, I commented to I'm not going to say all that, but I commented to the uh, to the mayor that when you look at all the work, and when I looked at that room, there were so many people there, and everybody's pulling toward the same goal, and making trying to make doing their part to make Paducah a, a destination spot, and we get all these we get accolades, we get awards. People are like, well, how are you getting all these awards? You know, what's, what are you guys doing that's so special? And I think the, the, the secret is, is just cooperation with folks looking at what's important. Education is, is obviously the, the, the piece that um, it's a rule breaker. I mean, if you get a great education and, and, you're, and you're working to, to achieve something, you have an opportunity here in Paducah to do that. You don't have to go anywhere from engineering to, and it's awesome. So when you look at that, you're like, some other places, they're like, how do you guys pay for students to go to college for two years? How, how does that happen? It, it happens with cooperation and understanding what's the one equalizer, and that's that. So it was a great evening, and uh, uh, I wish everybody could have. You know, we should get that video and run it because it, it was great. It was it's great. posted on our Facebook page. There you go. You can see it. There you go. Great It job. was nice. The Muslims for the Entrepreneurs of the Year. Yeah. Paducah yeah. Ambassadors says Volunteer of the Year. And yeah, it was a great program. Very good. good. Thank you. All right. Meetings adjourned. Everyone be safe. <laughs>